Assalamu alaikum and bismillahir rahmanir rahim uh, dear students and viewers you are watching mlt lectures by tanvir tara and uh, today uh, we are going to discuss a new topic and uh, the topic is anticoagulant so uh, we have to know the definition of anticoagulant uh, so while defining uh, anticoagulant so these are chemical substance which inhabits the phenomenon of coagulation in simple word whenever we are dealing with the different type of tests like complete blood count or prothrombin time or activated partial thromboplastin time like various type of tests need anticoagulants and the tube we are using for these type of test for example we are using cbc tubes uh, which have lavender color and uh, that tube contain edta that is known as ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid or uh, we can use uh, uh, trisodium citrate and uh, for the esr tubes or heparin or uh, some of the anticoagulant are used in uh, blood banking like uh, acid citrate dextrose solution uh, we call it acd or cpd even like citrate phosphate dextrose adenine solution so today we are going to discuss one by one the first one is edta the second one is trisodium citrate the third one is heparin the fourth one is acid citrate dextrose solution acd and uh, the fifth one is citrate phosphate dextrose adenine solution so the first one ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid we can call it edta so uh, the sodium and potassium salt of edta are powerful anticoagulants and uh, they are anticoagulants of choice for routine hematological work like uh, uh, in hematological work uh, the most important test is uh, cbc complete blood count and uh, we can use uh, the tube uh, that contain ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid how it works so edta acts by its chelating effect on calcium molecule and uh, the recommended concentration of the dipotassium is 1.50 uh, plus minus 0.25 mg per ml of blood now is there any drawback of edta whenever it use in excessive amount like uh, an excess of edta after both red cells and leukocyte cause shrinkage and degenerative changes so edta in excess of 2 mg per ml of blood may result in significant decrease in packed cell volume and increase in mean cell hemoglobin concentration uh, mchc and red blood cells are affected because of the excess amount of edta in a tube uh, so platelets are also affected and uh, whenever uh, an excess amount of edta uh, are used in a tube uh, so they can cause uh, swelling or disintegration of the platelet so uh, these are the drawbacks of edta whenever it used in high amount which is recommended while uh, nowadays a uh, uh, different type of uh, uh, tubes can be used uh, which have already anticoagulants and that tubes uh, like uh, edta in uh, lavender cap tube or uh, trisodium citrate in black tubes or uh, like heparin in green tubes so these are the tubes which have already uh, anticoagulants and exact amount of anti anticoagulants in that tube uh, now the second important thing is uh, edta is not suitable for use in the investigation of coagulation problems and uh, should not be used in the estimation of prothrombin time because we know the mechanism of edta that uh, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid chelate calcium and the calcium is factor number 4 uh, so when that calcium is chelated so the result is not uh, so confined and it cannot be used for the coagulation purpose the second most important anticoagulant which can be used in uh, laboratory is trisodium citrate 
trisodium citrate is the anticoagulant of choice in coagulation studies and uh, trisodium citrate can be used in two different area like uh, uh, we have two different tubes which contain trisodium citrate uh, one is for ES ESR it erythrocyte sedimentation rate but the volume for ESR is four volume of blood are diluted uh, with one volume of uh, sodium citrate solution and uh, the second thing uh, which is you uh, where uh, trisodium citrate is used is the coagulation studies uh, and that the volume is different 9 volume of blood is added to 1 volume of sodium citrate. The third anticoagulant which is mostly used in the laboratory is uh, heparin and uh, heparin is effective anticoagulant and uh, the most important thing in heparin is it does not alter the size of the red blood cells. It is a good dry anticoagulant when it is important to reduce to a minimum the chance of lysis occurring after blood has been withdrawn. So, it is very important while the size of the red blood cells is intact. However, heparinized blood should not be used for making blood film as uh, uh, when we use heparinized blood and we are making um, uh, some peripheral smear uh, and uh, then we are going to stain it from Natsuki stain. So, it gives a faint blue coloration to the background which is not recommended for the peripheral smear or for the morphological purpose. So, heparin is the best anticoagulant to use for osmotic fragility test because the red cell size is in intact otherwise it is inferior to EDTA for general use and uh, should not be used for leukocyte count is it is tends to cause the leukocyte to clump. So, if heparin is uh, best anticoagulant used for uh, osmotic fragility and cannot be used for the um, other purposes. The fourth one uh, is acid citrate dextrose or acid citrate dextrose adenine solution. So, this is the anticoagulant used uh, mostly in the blood bank and uh, these are preferred for storage of blood transfusions or for preserving the red blood cells and that is why they are already put it in the uh, blood bag. Uh, different types of anticoagulants used in blood bag are CPDA or CPDA1. Uh, so, they can uh, use for the blood bank purpose and uh, we can also use it for the enzymatic studies that for the study of uh, hemolytic process. So, uh, recommended volume for ACDA to blood is 1 ml of ACD solution is sufficient to prevent coagulation of uh, approximately 4 ml of blood and uh, that is why it can sufficiently used in the blood banks. Now, uh, the mode of action of anticoagulants, uh, if we are going to summarize these anticoagulants. So, uh, EDTA and uh, sodium citrate remove calcium which is essential for coagulation and uh, calcium is either precipitate is as insoluble oxalates or bound in a non-ionized form where heparin neutralizes thrombin by inhibiting the interaction of several clotting factor in the presence of plasma cofactor and uh, that is antithrombin 3. While uh, sodium citrate or heparin can be used to render blood incoagulable before transfusions. So, there are four types of anticoagulants which are excessively used in a clinical lab EDTA, trisodium citrate, heparin and the blood bank anticoagulants like ACD or CPDA1 citrate, phosphate, dextrose, adenine. So, thank you very much for watching the video and uh, for those viewers who have still not subscribed the channel, so please do subscribe the channel and click the bell icon to get more videos and more notification. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.